his bill that uh, we dealt with, and I, I think it uh, it passed rather handily. But you know, but the real truth of the matter here, as we look at this article, is that uh, Representative uh, Zerwas and his committee have uh, simply been given an assignment that you're going to lose one arm, whether it's the right arm or the left arm. Uh, we have not given them the ability to say, we need both arms. So we've just given you a choice to collect, to lose one arm, and you've just chosen whether it's uh, right or left. Because obviously all of these programs that are so important uh, to, to the citizens of, of this state, those who are least able to absorb absorb these these cuts and and these displacements are that are going to happen i mean it's 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 just devastating and without speaking for these uh, for representative Zerwa, uh, uh i'm sure it's got to be pretty apparent that this is a possible deal here well um I'm not sure we would say it's impossible, but it, it certainly uh, uh, is, I think you've described it well, uh, to, to meet uh, some of the requirements to restore some funding and restore some of the provider rates and so forth is, um, is, is going to require programmatic deletions within the, within the bill, of which we, we didn't feel that that was, you know, a reasonable thing to do. Um, we, I, we have great concern as a subcommittee over the impact to the safety net overall. And I think you're getting a taste of that right now, and that is, is that if we move forward with these, uh, these cuts, that we will see the safety net in the area of elder care uh, erode, fall apart, and we all know the consequences of that, and that's access to care in very high-cost settings, such as emergency rooms and so forth, and perhaps they end up in, in some kind of criminal justice environment or something, maybe not in the elderly, but certainly what we're talking about here are some of those issues. Um, we, we will see it uh, throughout this throughout this article, uh, and, and an overriding concern is what happens to the safety net in terms of the provision of care as a consequence of these uh, reductions. We um, feel like there's probably a place where we can accommodate um, reductions, and certainly I think most of the people have told us there is a there is a place that they can step forward and, and provide their services, knowing that the state is, does, is, does have its back up against the wall for a couple of years here. Uh, but at the current rate reductions that we're talking about, there's great concern among um, our subcommittee and as well as uh, others, including, I think, the commissioner of the whole uh, article, the whole agency, which he can speak for himself. But... I know that this is one of our priority concerns is what happens to the safety net as a consequence of this, which is not something that we can recover from overnight by simply just changing the rates. It doesn't, doesn't happen like that, and I think that's the problem that we have is that uh, we can make this decision overnight, but the ripple effect and consequence of it in terms of recovery is, is enormous. And, um, again, we're dealing, we're dealing with human lives and very serious human consequences as we consider, you know, the integrity of that safety net. Well, that